Okay. Still Tuesday, January 5th, 2021. It's 8.32 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm going to read Chapter 3 of Scots of Panic's book, How to Cure Racism. This chapter is titled, The Global Metaphoric Transfer. And I don't think I can get it all on the screen because, well, let's just say I don't have the technology or the know-how to do it. Praise the Lord. The Global Metaphoric Transfer. If physical wealth were measured in just what could be bought or obtained with money alone then, we would only desire what money can, can buy. Unfortunately, this is the way most all societies think and believe. Nowadays, the world gyrates and spins to the compass of an increasingly international rate of exchange and international business plan. Most sovereign nations are giving way to a world business platform. It is called globalism. In globalism, boundaries are destroyed, nationalities are eviscerated, and people are flushed together in an economically deprived new world order where politics and religion merge into a collective government and one-size-fits-all world religion with a future monetary rate of exchange. And in all, the racism problem will not go away, but only intensify as economic conditions worsen. In other words, it will become easier and easier to hate someone, especially based on their color, religious, or ethnic background. Is there any way out of this mess? Enter metaphor. Metaphor is a real way to understand and more importantly apply what is understood by means of a transfer of one state to another. If properly applied, it is a language that has no boundaries. It is free. It is not bound by hate, feelings, or opinions, or justifications because it operates not in a foreign land, but in a land that has no prejudice, no control, no power plays, no lies, no hatred. Its only language is to carry over, across, to literally be born again. Metaphor. Wow. Metaphor. Noun. A similitude, so the def this is the definition of metaphor, I presume. A similitude or figure of speech in which an expression is used to refer to something that it, that it does not literally denote in order to, to, to suggest a similarity. Origin, 1533 from Middle French metaphor, from Latin metaphora, from Greek metaphora, a transfer, especially of the sense of one word to a different word. Lit, a carrying over from metaphorin, transfer, carry over from meta, over, across, see meta, plus fearin, to carry or bear, see bear, verb, verb, I guess, okay. Racism will never be cured while it is on the current path that it is on. All the world's political, economic, and religious power has never cured it and never will. There is, however, a better way. A way that if racism starts with just one person, then the opposite applies where to combat it. A person must start with themselves where the cure for racism is. If we truly have met the enemy and the enemy is us, then the opposite applies where the enemy is defeated and the malignant spiritual cancer is cured. We apply this transfer of one state, one country, one person, one spirit, by knowing that it was because we all wanted to belong in the first place to something that was and is bigger than us. We understand that the spiritual cancer of this world that has plagued mankind from the beginning of time can only be cured by understanding that in this physical decaying world, we bridge the gap by crossing over into another family. Hallelujah. Wow, Scott, you really have a way with words here, don't you there, brother? Another family that is mystical and spiritual and is, and is real yet has absolutely no regard to a person's skin color or blood lineage. 
It is, a, it is very real beyond the boundaries of man and located in the breath and wind where everyone speaks the same language. Here is a poem I wrote and published years ago, now more apropos than ever. I hope it blesses you wherever you are. I'm sure it will, Scott. Into the boat. Getting into the boat to pass onto the other side. The seas were calm where the sun would shine. Lightness was in the air as they gathered on the beach with not a care in the world. But something started to give way as an ominous sign, a portend or growth that began to align. It all started as a small cloud that grew and grew and now became a shroud wrapped in a crowd that nobody knew. Its tentacles grew far and wide and hissed with evil glee, wanting to draw those in into its grasp as it would be. Darkness now encroached the earth like a crushing blow. The creation was now at the forefront of a torrent that gushed forth vile epita epitaphs of hate so great the likes of which has never been seen. The zeal of the one who hates the seed of the one now gushed forth with foment complete. The winds grew in the hail that was not a physical storm. It gyrated and swooned on its, helico on its bellicose path to envelop all. But something gave way on that ominous day, a voice, a calling, with the scepter of hope. It appeared as a mist of the rough waves of life standing in the middle of the storm as it rains as the rains pleaded all round. The howling and raging seas, not its voice majestic and true, except for those small, tiny, remnant few. Hallelujah. Wow. His voice was heard on that dark and menacing night when all... When all thought was lost in the tribulations indeed, the winds raged, darkness ensued when everything crossed in the whirlwind's false refuge. Wow. The crushing weight pulling down to cataclysm depth to cataclysm's depth forlorn, forgotten with no hope in sight. Or was it so? The travail of a woman in her on her darkest night wanting to give birth to a newborn child through the pain, the disheveled, the disheveled look piercing through to the soul, the storm raged on, unremitting in its song of death. Still that voice, pure and true, did not remit in its might. It continued on throughout the night, calling to its seed who knew its name. It held out even to death. The storm will not deal its crushing blow. The flood will not en envelop all in its path. Even in the pain of a newborn birth, the loneliness, the hurt, the heartache will turn to new worth. The floods of despair in the storm will declare the voice for all who heed his call to proceed to walk on its turbulent seas. Not looking down or all around, but to the one, the only one to heed, the voice is gentle as it calls out your name to walk on the raging seas. To leave behind the comfort zones on all the confines once thought to be true. Will you leave all behind to get out and walk on the waters with him? His name is Christ and he is Lord, even of the turbulent seas. That was a great poem. The next video, I will start chapter four. I'm sorry.